Following the Second World War, a number of war crimes trials were held to bring the perpetrators of the Holocaust to justice. Inside a courtroom in Lüneburg, the Belsen trials took place that sought to deal with the SS men and women who were captured after the liberation of Belsen. Many of these guards had committed horrendous crimes at different concentration camps around German-occupied lands, but what shocked the world is that amongst the Commandant Josef Kramer were a number of young women who were brought to trial. Irma Grazer was the youngest female Nazi hanged by British law following the Second World War, and despite being only 22 when she was executed, many around the world could not understand how such a young woman showed such depravity. She became known as the Beautiful Beast, or the Hyena of Auschwitz, for her sadistic treatment of prisoners. But what is the story behind her terrible treatment of prisoners at some of Nazi Germany's most horrific camps? Join us today as we look at the disgusting crimes of Irma Grazer, and remember to support our channel. Please make sure to subscribe. Irma Grazer's decision to join the League of German Girls, the youth branch of the Nazi party for teenage girls, caused chaos within her family. Her father banned her from joining the Nazi group, but Irma the rebellious teenager joined anyway. She went further rebelling against her father's anti-Nazi beliefs, and shortly before her 18th birthday, she moved to the SS Female Helpers training base found near Ravensbrück, which was an all-female concentration camp. Whilst here she trained in how to become a concentration camp guard, being schooled in horrific brutality and barbaric treatment. She was taught by some of the most infamous female guards, and Irma Grazer would join the ranks of those when she became involved in the concentration camp system. Following her training, she worked at Ravensbrück, and her sister it's claimed also worked there. She claimed whilst at Ravensbrück that she was paid 34 marks a month, and she noted that the conditions there were very severe. But at Ravensbrück, she was working as a volunteer initially, and she made the conscious choice to treat people terribly from her own mind. She was not conscripted into the concentration camp system, but instead voluntarily chose to go and treat people in that manner. She was promoted to a supervisor at Ravensbrück, but by June 1942, the persecution against the Jews had increased significantly, and the policies against them was inflicting large-scale suffering, and huge deportations to concentration camps were occurring. As more were being deported, there was a need for more workers, and in March 1943, after impressing at Ravensbrück, Irma Grazer was transferred across to Auschwitz. Whilst at Auschwitz, she was promoted, where she acted as a guard inside of Auschwitz to Birkenau. This was the main extermination element of the camp, and it was whilst here that she was incredibly brutal. She was involved in the sadistic selections, where she would walk in between prisoners, selecting those who were deemed not fit enough to work. Those prisoners would then be sent to their deaths inside of the gas chambers at the camp. She eventually rose to the second highest rank for a female concentration camp guard, but whilst at Auschwitz, Grazer developed a reputation for being a despicable and violent guard. Many different survivors of the camp, and also Bergen-Belsen, where she was later transported to at the end of the conflict, would testify of her brutality. Grazer was known for being incredibly violent, striking women with such force that they would be knocked to the floor and would have their teeth knocked out. She was known for assaulting inmates, and she also walked and patrolled Auschwitz with her dog. This dog had been trained to kill, and Grazer would let it feast upon the prisoners, and on a number of occasions, prisoners were maimed to death by her dog. She would carry her whip, and would constantly whip and beat prisoners, causing much bloodshed, and she would also kick prisoners with her jackboots until blood was drawn. She was also known for emotionally torturing prisoners, whilst they were working in pits or in different parts of the camp. Grazer, who was on patrol, would draw out her pistol and would shoot one of the prisoners dead for no reason. She randomly shot prisoners and laughed once she had taken a life, and took great pleasure in this. Whilst during the selections it was said, she would select prisoners to die who she thought were better looking than her, out of nothing but pure jealousy. She would send these women to their death straight away, and would drive the women into the gas chambers, armed with her whip. It was also claimed in her quarters and hut where she lived, that there were lampshades found made from human skin, but this has been disputed. 
she would, without any need, beat prisoners to death, and for all of this she gained the nickname, the Hyena of Auschwitz, and the Beautiful Beast. When questioned at trial about her violent tendencies, she claimed that all of the evidence against her was nothing but a lie, and she did admit that her dog did bite someone on the shoulder once, and claimed she never purposely set her dog onto prisoners and inmates. She claimed she did not beat the prisoners, and she said that she saw other guards beating prisoners, but claimed she did not do this herself. Evidence was put forward that claimed she was seen at Auschwitz with the Angel of Death, Dr. Josef Mengele, selecting prisoners for the gas chambers, and she claimed that this may have happened, and that when many prisoners ran away, she may have beaten them. During this one incident, it was said that she beat a prisoner unconscious. Another witness claimed that she did attend selections and forced prisoners to stand at roll call for up to three or four hours, and in one account stated that to escape, two young girls jumped out of a window at Auschwitz, and whilst they lay on the ground injured, Grazer shot them dead. The reports of her crimes shocked the courtroom, and many were shocked how a young girl could take the lives so willingly of other people, despite being in her early 20s. As mentioned, she was captured at Bergen-Belsen, and at trial was sentenced to death for her crimes. She was hanged at Hamlin Prison by British executioner Albert Pierpoint, and it was said of her execution, We climbed the stairs to the cells where the condemned were waiting. A German officer at the door, leading to the corridor, flung open the door, and we filed past the row of faces and into the execution chamber. The officers stood at attention. Brigadier Patton Walsh stood with his wristwatch raised. He gave me the signal, and a sigh of released breath was audible in the chamber. I walked into the corridor. Irma Grazer, I called. The German guards quickly closed all grills on twelve of the inspection holes and opened one door. Irma Grazer stepped out. The cell was far too small for me to go inside, and I had to pinion her in the corridor. Follow me, I said in English, and O'Neill repeated the order in German. At 9.34am, she walked into the execution chamber, gazed for a moment at the official standing round, then walked on into the centre of the trap, where I'd made a chalk mark. She stood on this mark very firmly, and as I placed a white cap over her head, she said in a languid voice, Schnell. The drop crashed down, then the doctor followed me into the pit, and pronounced her dead. After twenty minutes the body was taken down, and placed in a coffin ready for burial. The crimes of Irma Grazer were incredibly shocking. When she was executed she was just 22, which meant that her crimes were committed when she was around the age of 20. She had a very different life to those of that age in the modern world, but remember that it was a life she greatly wanted. Grazer wanted to become a concentration camp guard and took great pleasure in the execution of prisoners and their ill treatment. This shows us a despicable person that she really was. The crimes of Irma Grazer are endless, and today many of them remain untold. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.